Welcome. I am very surprised like there are so many people after yesterday's party. It was hard for me to come. <laughs> so uh, thank you for DevConf and all the volunteers for their uh, hard work for this wonderful conference. I am very happy to speak here. So let me start talking about myself a bit. Uh, my name is Ege. I live in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, for the last two years, I am working on Perconas Kubernetes operators as a software developer. Uh, before that, I worked as a system administrator and a web developer. You can find me on GitHub and Twitter. I don't use Twitter that much, but if you want, uh, you can DM me for anything. OK, let's start. So Kubernetes is, is a hot topic for, for many years. And like we are now seeing a surge of interest for stateful workloads on Kubernetes. And like uh, Daton Kubernetes community recently uh, did a survey, like I, I believe 2021, uh, and they found out like 90% of responders think Kubernetes is ready for stateful workloads. Uh, and like 70% of them really like started using databases on Kubernetes already. So that makes me think why people want to deploy their databases on Kubernetes. You can argue because like, it's a hype, and maybe you are not wrong. Uh, but I believe the reason is people like having a standard API for their whole infrastructure. And people also like the ease of scalability uh, of Kubernetes, and they want to have the same for their database. So this talk is about best practices to how to deploy your databases on Kubernetes. And honestly, I don't like the term best practice at all because it's very context dependent. Like you have your own best practices, every team, every company has their own best practices. Uh, and like when people start talking about best practices, it always feels like a cargo cult to me. So you can ask, okay, again, why you did like select this title uh, for your talk. I didn't. Uh, I am filling for some other speaker that already has this talk accepted. But it is the way it is. So like the title says best practices. So I shall deliver some best practices for you. So I will give you two best practices for deploying your databases on Kubernetes. And these two practices I believe like generally applicable for everyone. So first best practice is knowing yourself. And I can call this a best practice because just like it's come from Socrates. So uh, I, I am sure it's generally, applic generally applicable. So every product, every company has their own requirements, own expectations, their own way of doing things, own practices. And I see more and more with our users and customers, like people come to Kubernetes and like they think it will fix every day, like every problem of theirs. It will fix scalability, it will fix like automated failovers, uh, but it is not the case in most, most of the times. Because uh, for all this, you need to like, understand your own best practices, your, your own way of doing things. So like first thing I believe before like doing a database on Kubernetes thing, you need to understand what are your expectations about your database cluster. If you want to perform a failover, for example, how do you expect to do it? How much downtime you can tolerate uh, in case of failover? If you are troubleshooting something, where do you expect logs to be? How do you want to do that? So I also recommend giving a special attention to your assumptions because assumptions are blind spots of human mind. So you need to turn them either into facts by proving them or disprove them and find some workarounds. So if you are coming to Kubernetes to like have a, a standard API and ease of scalability, you need a good automation. 
And of course, you can already have some automation for your databases. You can automate adding a new replica, you can automate failovers. But in Kubernetes, actions are not imperative. They are declarative. You declare a state, and Kubernetes has a, this never-ending loop that tries to reach that ideal state more and more. So putting the binaries of like MySQL, PostgreSQL, or MongoDB, like uh, the open source databases, one of, uh, some of them, it is the easy part to deploy uh, them to Kubernetes. You can put, like you can build Docker images, and in 30 minutes, I believe, you can have a working cluster. It is the easy part. What's hard is ensuring the state matches your ideal. Because especially when we're talking about the stateful workflows, uh, you have the Kubernetes state with objects, all these uh, API objects, and you have the database, which is stateful also. So you need to reconcile two of them. And it is the hard part. So you can try to do it yourself, uh, but you will become day two guy. And becoming day two guy is like, life is too short. I've been there, and I, I don't like it either. So second best practice is using an operator. Rather than being a day two guy, use an operator. So it's not a surprising thing that like many database operators all comes from the companies that's already experienced uh, on the database, they have their own opinions. They have their expertise. And what does experts have too much of? They have opinions. So in this sense, operator is an opinionated software. Companies embody their opinions, their expertise into their operators. And it doesn't mean their opinions are correct. Uh, and you should submit to them, like without questioning anything. So that's why knowing yourself is important, I believe. Uh, so you can verify uh, the operator in question and see if it's a good fit for you. You can uh, argue like every software is opinionated. And I believe it's correct, yeah. Uh, but as I said, uh, Kubernetes is a declarative environment. And most of the actions uh, of the operators, you don't see. It's in the background. Like, it's not like you are running some commands, getting some output. It's in your cluster, working on your behalf. So it is, in some way, like trying to mimic a human DBA in the Kubernetes cluster. So it is very important to understand the opinions of operators, so you can trust uh, at night, like the, your cluster is in good hands. Okay, enough philosophy. Let's talk about Percona Kubernetes operators. In Percona, we have four Kubernetes operators. Uh, one is operator for MySQL. It's, it's just regular MySQL with group replication, async replication. Second is operator for extra DB cluster. It is also MySQL, but with Galera replication built in. And operator for MongoDB, and operator for, for PostgreSQL. These are some features of our operators. Now I will talk about them. I will read each of them in detail. I'm just kidding. No. I'm, I'm not going to talk, to talk about them. Just, just look at them. Like, you will have plenty of features, plenty of things that you can implement your own best practices using Percon operators. Instead of our features, I want to talk about our opinions. Uh, because remember I said operators are opinionated. So I want to present you some of our high level opinions that affects how we design operators. So first thing is availability. For us, database availability is number one priority. To have a healthy cluster, you need many components running. Uh, and we are working hard to ensure your database posts are, I did something. 
Okay. We are working hard to ensure database ports are independent. So that means no other conference failure should affect database ports. Their readiness, liveness, entry points, it should work even all else fails. You can see there is a, like maybe front row can see. I try to do a marketing trick here. Maybe you can see the asterisk. So yeah, we are trying to like ensure database posts are independent, but there are some things like at least needs operator to be running in the cluster. So for example, in our XODB operator, uh, if you like dealing with a full cluster crash recovery, uh, it needs an operator if you want to do that automated. So I said database availability is number one, unless data integrity is, is at risk. I, I believe many, many companies uh, can tolerate some downtime, loss of availability uh, for the, your databases, but not many of them can like tolerate data loss. So ensuring we are not prone to data loss is very important. And for, for the sake of availability, we don't compromise data integrity. So that means like if we can automate some, some failovers uh, with like ensuring data integrity is intact, okay. But if we can't, we are leaving a human DBA that's already like experienced in this particular cluster. Performance. Performance literally inside our name. Percona means performance consulting and A, I don't know, like just phonetic thing. Uh, the company started as a like performance consulting company, then it grew with like support, training, and now software. But it's still in our DNA. So we aim to provide like accept, acceptable person, uh, performance uh, for every deployment with operator. I say acceptable because like uh, every cluster, every product has their own requirements, their own type of traffic. So it is hard to ensure like you deploy and you get the best performance. It's hard to say that, it would be a lie. But like performance should be acceptable from, from the day one. And if you want to fine tune the performance, we provide some tools. Like uh, Marco Tusa, our MySQL tech lead, created this tool, uh, especially for the operator. So you will get like plenty of uh, MySQL configuration options, uh, the time asked for uh, liveness props, delays, and all this stuff, like it, it gives you maybe like hundreds uh, of different options according to your uh, configuration. And if it's not enough, it can be. Uh, you can always contact Percona for consulting. We still do that. So people talk about Kubernetes is hard and like, I don't have empirical data about it, but I believe they are mostly talking about the troubleshooting issues. So we can say Kubernetes is very easy unless something goes wrong. So why troubleshooting Kubernetes is hard? Because there are many moving parts and you don't have a solid ground. Everything subject to change anytime because this never ending loop. And now you have two loops, one, uh, even more, but like let's say two, one Kubernetes and one the operator because operator do, does the same thing. Like it tries to reconcile stuff with a never ending loop and it tries to reach the ideal state. And it's also hard because you have many different parts to look at. Like you have multiple containers in pods, you have multiple pods in cluster, you have events, uh, and sometimes you have multiple logs in each container also. So it's, it's hard because of that. And like there are like tools maybe you are familiar with, like S-Trace, TCP dump, they are not working as you expect from like, out of the box. So Percona is also known for its top class support. Like they are really rock stars of databases 
and like one of our elite customers. Making their life easy means like we need to think hard about troubleshooting. And like making their life easy means making life easier for all of our users. So it means we need to provide tools, guides, documentation about how to troubleshoot stuff in Kubernetes. And it, it's, uh, it was not a clear goal until recently in Percona about troubleshooting and uh, how it started in Kubernetes. But now, uh, like we are listening our support, we are listening our users, and understand it's a blocker for many people to come to Kubernetes. So we are, uh, we are committed to improve the situation for everyone, not just Percona. Like we, are, we aim to provide tools for whole ecosystem. And reliability. So we know we are working on databases. And I believe, again, uh, people care more about reliability there of their databases than like, shiny new features. Uh, and then we can say reliability is a big feature that we can provide. So if, it, if a feature makes it hard to ensure reliability, it's a no-go. Uh, we don't compromise reliability, just, just like some, some use case, like uh, supporting some use case. And breaking our operators is like one of my hobbies. I really like it. I really like to see them suffer. Uh, I also like breaking other companies' operators, but my, my manager said I should shut up about them. I don't. I can't say anything about them. So I will. I will say. And by breaking our operators, like uh, we understand their limits. Uh, if it will be a lie if I say like, yeah, I break. We break them and we fix every issue. No. We, we, we don't, uh, because we can't. But like with every experiment, with every failure scenario, we reduce the uncertainty. With like documentation, with tickets, with some like make it hard to shoot yourself uh, at the foot. So we are trying to ensure your databases are reliable. So in summary, I talked about these two best practices, like introspecting yourself, knowing yourself, and using an operator. And I also talked about availability of your databases, how is number one priority, unless integrity is at risk, how performance matters for us, and how we committed like, to make troubleshooting easy for everyone, and how reliability is a feature. I, I now under, like, see no vendor looking. I didn't. I removed it recently, but I forgot to update it. But yeah, when ensuring we don't lock in users uh, is not just uh, our opinion as in Kubernetes operators. Is in op our opinion in Percona. So people should come to our products easily as they can go. So we are trying to ensure that in every every product. So we have a new initiative called Percona Kubernetes Squad. Like it's, uh, it's like some people uh, wants to be close to development, wants to influence it. Uh, and like you can have some like AMA sessions with me and my colleagues and get some swag. And like notice, notice I say users, not customers. Uh, we are an open source company. Every product of ours is open source. Uh, and we don't like separate our users with like paying or not paying. You can influence our roadmap uh, by just like creating a ticket, like uh, opening a pull request, a draft pull request to say like, I want this feature. This is like a pseudo code. Like, can we do something about it? Because we care about users, not just customers. And contributions are very welcome. Like you can, if you want, break stuff and like create tickets for us. We have a community forum. So you, if you like have a problem or want to discuss something, you can uh, create a topic there. And we have this 
four repositories. So like if you want to get your hands dirty, like you can create peers. It's always welcome. Oh, thank you. If you have any questions, please, if you want to see me sweat on them. But what do you mean by acceptance test? Um, for example, if company uh, would like to, uh, we have some uh, physical uh, workload, mm -hmm. we would like to test uh, if uh, our expectation mm -hmm. would be uh, this uh, accepted uh, process. Uh, so, uh, and on the first round, the big iterator and the enough uh, faster, uh, we uh, would expect one. Mm -hmm. And uh, within uh, some time, thanks to colleagues of the team, we could increase. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, how it, does uh, it work? Yeah. So the question is like how how auto tuning works, and can it affect acceptance tests, like when you assess the operator? So let me talk about the auto tuning. Uh, we are using the container resources for database. Uh, to understand the limits of resources. So uh, we do, like we select some of the important uh, configuration options that affects performance. Like for, for example, in MySQL, uh, we calculate uh, buffer pool size, you know, DB buffer pool size, uh, according to your limits. Uh, and max connections, according to your limits. In MongoDB, uh, wire tiger cache calculated according to your limits how it's ratio. So it's not like a continuous process. If you in increase the limits, you will get more buffer pool, more uh, case size in wire tiger. Uh, but it's not like uh, always auto tuning for yourself. It's, it's uh, dependent on the resources. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Any other one? Closing in five, four, three, two. Um, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, for example, in uh, feature of uh, databases right now, uh, going to switching uh, storages and uh, some databases uh, think about uh, uh, which data storage is out of uh, where processing can take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. enough databases, uh, we uh, talking about two different volumes, uh, two different planes, mm -hmm. and a day uh, when we, for example, lost this uh, uh, link with our uh, volume, mm -hmm. we should uh, so few uh, mm -hmm. how this lost data. And uh, actually, we can uh, and go out closer from uh, position points to uh, block storage. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, like, if I get your question right, I am not sure if I uh, got it right. Uh, but you are talking about, like, how to uh, abstract the data layer more. Uh, well, there are, there are some uh, new technologies, not, not uh, in our uh, operators currently. But like Neon, for example, I believe uh, the serverless PostgreSQL solution does something like that. They separate data layer and uh, compute layer uh, 
and they abstract each of them. So you can have this serverless PostgreSQL experience. And in, in Pericona, we, like, we did some POCs, like if we can provide this uh, in the Kubernetes, how, how we can do this. Um, but currently, our operators aim to like match uh, the regular uh, deployments of these open source databases, MongoDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL. We aim to like provide our own opinions, how what we uh, recommend our users, like their uh, deployments should look like, how disaster recovery should look like, and we aim to provide like some automation on Kubernetes for them. So it's they are not like uh, novel. Uh, we are not doing novel uh, deployments with this uh, open source database. But there are there are some technologies like coming up, I believe. Yeah, uh, I know that the Pericona um, stores uh, um, and extends uh, databases. Uh, so uh, operators uh, they will not uh, spin up uh, community versions mm. or, or community versions. Uh, we we don't have community versions in Pericona. Uh, so we do, we don't have like this uh, enterprise version and community version. Every uh, everything, every feature is there, just a single product. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm uh, with the executive version of uh, Postgres, for example, I uh, will spin up. Uh, mm. uh, built in Pericona or in community of, from. Uh, uh, so, if we talk about Postgres, uh, we don't do any uh, development on them, uh, the Postgres. We take the upstream version, package it and like test it and like test with the distribution because the important thing, we are providing distributions, not just PostgreSQL. We provide distribution in Linux sense, so we provide PG backrest, PG bouncer, PostgreSQL, and we test them together. So like if you use a, one version uh, of distribution, you can ensure your PG backrest, PG bouncer, PG pool will work as expected, like how RHEL, for example, uh, provides uh, this kind of trust. So, so operators also PG bouncer? Yeah, operators also like uh, deploy the distribution. So it uh, installs the PG bouncer, configures it. It installs the PG backrest, etc. So uh, you will have the distribution on the Kubernetes, and all the components, all these versions will work together, like flawlessly. I hope. So, uh, and if you are talking about the Postgres version. Uh, we support, I believe, I'm not sure about the 12, 13, 14, and 15 in our PostgreSQL operator. Are you doing any tweaks uh, with your default configuration? Like, or do you use just the vanilla instance of your database? Are we doing what with default configuration? Mm, yeah, we are like, there are some uh, options needs, like, needs to be there uh, for operator to work. Uh, there are some options needs to be there for like certain type of replication to work, for, ex for example, in MySQL. So like, yeah, we, we do have a default configuration. Uh, it's not just about the performance, it's about the, like uh, some, some things needs to be there. And yeah, we, we do that. But you have the possibility to like provide a custom configuration, override some of them, uh, but like not all of them. We we will like we will remove some of your configuration if it it will break your cluster. So there are like certain possibilities. Uh, the, the question is like, how can I migrate my already existing cluster to, uh, to a deployment with your operator, right? So depending on the operator, we have some different options. Uh, for example, like in Mongo uh, operator and in extra DB cluster operator, we have uh, this option called cross cluster replication. So you can configure your cluster to replicate from your source database if you like. If you want to minimize the downtime when you do the switchover 
or maybe you don't want to like switch over but just have a, some disaster recovery site in the Kubernetes. Uh, there are like also ways like to, with MySQL uh, operator and Mongo operator, you can uh, do some manual steps to restore your physical backup uh, to uh, Kubernetes also. And yeah, logical, uh, logical dumps uh, are okay, but like depending on the data, data size, of course. Now Postgres also uh, supports this cross-cluster application. Okay, so thank you guys. Thank you, listen, for listening to me.